What's going on? It's Suk and I'm back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. And in today's video, I'll be showcasing the performance results that I got when running a number of different tests on the MacSpec 14-inch MacBook Pro. That means this MacBook Pro has the M3 Max, which has a 16-core CPU, a 40-core GPU, 8 terabytes of storage, along with 128 gigabytes of unified memory. Yes, that makes this MacBook Pro the most expensive 14-inch MacBook Pro that you can currently purchase, with it retailing here in the United Kingdom at a price of £6,999. So yeah, you can probably imagine that this video costs quite a bit of money to make. So be sure to subscribe, smacking that bell icon to be notified when new videos go live on this channel. But without any further ado, let's hit the titles. So in typical fashion, the first series of benchmarking applications which I ran on this MacBook Pro come from Geekbench. And the first of these is a slightly older version, Geekbench 4. So when it comes to running the CPU test through Geekbench 4, I got a single core score of 8,574 with a multi-core score of 67,502. And when running the OpenGR compute test, I got scores of 319,993. And when running the metal compute test, I got scores of 274,380. I then ran Geekbench 5, and when running the CPU test, I got single core scores of 1,672 with multi core scores of 18,030. However, when running the OpenGL compute test, I got scores of 75,714, and when running the metal compute test, I got scores of 93,026. I then ran the latest version of Geekbench being Geekbench 6 and when running the CPU test I got single core scores of 3096 with multi core scores of 20913 and when running the OpenGL compute test through Geekbench 6 I got scores of 94358 and when running the metal compute test I got scores of 156890. I then ran a number of different Cinebench versions and I started off by running Cinebench R20 and when running this test I got CPU scores of 6125 and when running Cinebench R23 I got single core scores of 1890 along with multi core scores of 22981 which indeed gives us a ratio of 12.16. I also ran the latest version of Cinebench, Cinebench 2024, and when running the CPU test, I got single core scores of 140, along with multi core scores of 1577, which indeed gives us a ratio of 11.28. And when it comes to running the GPU test through Cinebench 2024, I got scores of 13,205. I then ran a number of different tests through 3D Mark and started off with the wildlife test. And when running this test, as expected, it got a maxed out score with it averaging 120 frames per second. I also ran the wildlife stress test and the best score that this MacBook Pro scored was 20,040 with its lowest being 20,020. And when running the Wildlife Extreme test, it also scored 20,040, with it also averaging 120 frames per second. When running the Wildlife Extreme stress test, the best score that the MacBook Pro scored was 20,035, with its lowest being 18,746. And so when it comes to running this particular test, we're slowly seeing that the 14 inch chassis might not be the best for such a powerful chip. The next test which I ran was the Solar Bay test, and when running this test, I got a score of 31,561, with it scoring an average frame rate of 120 frames per second. I also ran the Solar Bay stress test, and when running this test, the best score that it achieved was once again 31,561, with its lowest being 31,560. 
The next testing application that I ran was once again another graphics test, however this time it was from GFX Bench running the GFX Bench Metal Test. Now GFX Bench is quite good as it runs a number of different tests on the machine which vary from both higher and lower levels of intensity that are run on and off screen. Now in the interest of saving some time, I have calculated the average for these results but as always I will show you each individual result. So the average that I got for the higher intensive tasks was 390.77 frames per second and the average that I got for the lower level intensive tasks was a frame rate of 381.71 frames per second. I then ran Novabench 2 and Novabench is quite good as it tests all aspects of the machine from its CPU and GPU along with other areas like the system storage along with the memory. And when running this test I got a score of 4274. I then wanted to test the 8TB SSD in this MacBook Pro so I ran a number of different disk speed tests and started off with the Blackmagic disk speed test. I got write speeds of 8211.3 megabytes per second with read speeds of 5571 megabytes per second. And when testing the SSD using the Aja disk speed test, the fastest write speeds that I got was 4460 megabytes per second with read speeds of 4929 megabytes per second. I also wanted to test the networking performance of this MacBook Pro and so I got Wi-Fi download speeds of 281 megabits per second with upload speeds of 98.8 megabits per second. I also ran the Antutu HTML5 browser benchmark and when running this test I got scores of 92,528 and when running Speedometer 2.0 I got scores of 653. I also ran the V-Ray test and got scores of 13,664. I then wanted to test the 3D rendering capabilities of this MacBook Pro and so I rendered a number of different scenes through Blender. And when using Blender 4.0 to export the classroom scene using the CPU, it took 3 minutes and 33 seconds to render and when rendering using the GPU, it did this in 26 seconds. And once again, when using Blender 4.0 to render the BMW scene using the CPU, it took 1 minute and 35 seconds to complete, whereas it took 12 seconds using the GPU. I then wanted to test the gaming performance of this MacBook Pro, so I then ran the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark, which is native to macOS. Now when running at the native resolution of this MacBook Pro, which is 3024 by 1964, and when keeping the graphics settings to high, it ran 9,922 frames with it averaging 63 frames per second. However, when the graphic settings were lower to medium, it now rendered 10,492 frames with it now averaging 66 frames per second. When it comes to lowering the resolution to 2560 by 1600 with the graphic setting set to high, it now rendered 13,570 frames with it averaging 86 frames per second. When lowering the graphics details, it now rendered 14,083 frames with it now averaging 91 frames per second. And when it comes to lowering the resolution now to 1920 by 1200, keeping the graphic settings to high, it now rendered 19,371 frames, with it now averaging 123 frames per second. Lowering the resolution once again to medium, it now rendered 20,080 frames, with it averaging 128 frames per second. Further lowering the resolution down to 1200 by 854, keeping the graphic settings to high, it now rendered 24,803 frames, with it averaging 158 frames per second. And once again lowering the graphics details down to medium, it now rendered 25,826 frames, with it now averaging 164 frames per second. I then ran a timed video export using Final Cut Pro to export a 5 minute 29 second video project to H.264. Now when rendering as a Full HD project, it completed it in 26 seconds. However, when it comes to exporting as a 4K project, that's 3840 by 2160, it completed it in 1 minute 24 seconds. 
I then ran some more gaming benchmarks and started off with the Unigen Benchmarking Tools Heaven Benchmark and when running at a resolution of 1515 by 982 it scored 4244 with it averaging 168.5 frames per second and when lowering the resolution slightly to 1440 by 900 it now scored 4200 with it averaging 166.7 frames per second. And when running the Valley test from Unigen Benchmarking Tools at the same resolution of 1515 by 982, it now scored 5,234, with it averaging a frame rate of 125.1 frames per second. When lowering the resolution to 1440 by 900, it now scored 5,296, with it now averaging 126.6 frames per second. I then wanted to see how many tracks this MacBook Pro would be able to play using Logic Pro and the answer was quite shocking with it being able to play 315 tracks simultaneously. I then ran a timer across Adobe Lightroom to see how long it took to complete certain tasks. So the time taken to export and denoise 100 GH5 raw images was 13 minutes 37 seconds whereas it took 4 minutes and 3 seconds to run the super res across 50 48 megapixel iPhone 15 Pro Max raw images. So be sure to subscribe as I say we are on the road to 10,000 subscribers and it would be nice to have your face joining us on this journey. And if you've ever wondered what it's like to perform these tests on the 16 inch MacBook Pro, well then you definitely want to subscribe, clicking that bell to be notified as I have something cooking. If you've got any questions with anything you've seen in this video, then be sure to hit me up over on my social media, that's X and Instagram. I'll leave them linked down below in this video's description. Once again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care and have a good one.